It's true, I did steal my friend's style. My friend Micah is this amazing miniature painter who has this very unique style. I wanted to paint something for his army that is similar to the rest of his stuff so it would fit in. But first I had to kind of like rack my brain about it. Like, what even is style? For thousands of years, scientists have argued about whether or not style is even real. Does it exist? Is it a natural phenomenon? Or is it a gift from gods? Is style just the way you were taught to do something? Or is style your own way of doing something? Your suit is fitted desert fashion. Who told you how to do that? So when I look at the miniatures that I painted, like this Guttrek here, I mean, he's fine. He's a good looking mini. The colors are really saturated, very clean, but it's hard to point at that mini and say, oh, yeah, that's uh, painted by some miniature painter. Now let's look at some other miniatures that have a definite sense of style to them. Kenny Bechet, super colorful, lots of clean lines, lots of airbrushed, saturated colors. Then you have Kaha, am I saying it right, Kaha? Hand sculpted bases, lots of freehand, lots of textural stuff. When you find a miniature painter who's got a very distinct style, it's easy to look at their style and say, ah, these are the three things that make them stand out. My point is a person could be painting for years and never have developed their own style. I know that I haven't. So now let's go onto Instagram and see if we can do some reconnaissance here. What does Micah's work look like? I'm gonna paint this cursling for Micah. So first I'm gonna head over to Instagram and see what he's all about. First things first, I noticed that he has two things that I don't have. One, talent. And two, he has a lot of these freaky miniature paints I've never heard of before. They look like they're fluorescent colors and I think I have some fluorescent colors to use myself. Step one is gonna be dry brushing. Micah's style relies on a lot of dry brushing. I get middle gray on my paintbrush and wipe most of it off. And then I use this piece of trash I made called a dry brushing rig. This will inform what the paint will look like on the mini. When I'm happy with how it looks, I start dry brushing from the top down as if it were lit from above. Next is the highlighting layer. This is just a dry brush of the lighter gray that's going to catch most of the edges and give it a natural highlight and also create shadows where the brush doesn't reach. This reminds me, I have to get some blue paper towels so I can see what the heck I'm doing with white paint. Same thing as before, I use a dry brushing rig to make sure the paint won't be too strong. And then I keep a pretty light touch here. Better to not add enough paint than it is to have too much. I even get the base of the mini here where I plan to do this part later with contrast paint and washes. After looking at the model for a while, I decided on what colors I would use for each section. This is a contrast paint called Allendon Yellow, and it is such a pretty yellow I look for excuses to use it. Contrast over dry brush goes on like a glaze, so it's very thin and it shows the shading underneath. I try not to let it pool up anywhere, so I stipple the brush and move the contrast around often to keep that stuff flowing. And this is where I made my first mistake. Let's see if you can spot it. What I'm trying to do here is get out some of that sweet Vallejo fluorescent purple. I shook it up real good, and then I put some flow improver into it. My hope is that I'd be able to make it into a glaze and use it like contrast. But once I got it onto the mini, it had very strange properties. It was somehow oily and sticky at the same time. Now I've never worked with these paints before, so I thought I could switch to a different color and maybe get a different result. This time it's even thinner than before. But I can still see how oily and sticky it is right on the side of the palette. It's not just sticky in the way that it sticks to figures, but it's sticky to itself. Inside the solution that I used to thin them down, this made it more like a ropey concoction of unicorn ejaculate, and I found it completely unworkable. From my commission painting days, I know that I don't always have time to troubleshoot every little snag. So for now, it's back to basics. I'm going to retreat into what I know and use a green technical paint that I got from Games Workshop and use it like a glaze. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with some advice here, take it or leave it. Improvisation is good for inspiration, but it is antithetical to schedule. When you don't know what the result will be, you have hope, and hope is not a plan. I don't wanna bore you with every color choice, but this one is noteworthy. I'm trying out the first generation of speed paints for the first time. These are the Army Painter response to the contrast paint from Games Workshop. If you wanna know how these paints perform, check out the channel Goobertown Hobbies. Color-wise, I pick a little blue for the tail, and I want the armor plating to be red along with some accent points, like the horns. Finally getting the bravery to mess with the fluorescent paints again, I work some magenta right in over the green feathers on his head. And magenta and green clash. 
but since the magenta was so thin, I'm hoping that in the end it looks like green stems magenta plumes. The shape of the mini here will create a visual barrier, justifying my laziness. These miniatures are so finely detailed they kind of paint themselves when you're working with glazes. I take a mental note here that the finish on this paint is very glossy. At the end of this process, I start to dress at the base with a fluorescent yellow highlight dry brush. I want to improve the contrast of the mini in certain areas, so I do that by dry brushing a light gray just right over the colors I've got now. I can always use the glaze to bring it back up to the undertone if I prefer. I improved the contrast on the blue feathers by dry brushing a light gray right on top, and then I did the same for the weapon, this time over black. And then I added a green technical paint over the top of that to tie the mini together with this noisy base. Now we have some cool colors picked out, but it's just not as clean as I would have liked it. So maybe I do have a sense of style. Where I can't leave good enough alone, I have to go and clean up these lines. I think I prefer a dark line bordering similar colors. And when you think of gold, it's basically yellow. Even though, in the case of this, it's pretty orange yellow. My buddy Vince says it looks like cheese, but I love this gold. And so when he says that, it makes me mad. But I'm also a cheese expert, so ultimately he's right. And it's just funny to me that I call this cheese gold. We're gonna do all of the flourishing and embellishments on the edges of this armor with this cheesy gold. The final stage is my favorite stage. It's the highlighting phase. I'm super lazy and I don't bother highlighting every bit on the mini. I like to go for things that I think are gonna stand out, like the horn, the sword, Vince Ventrella said a long time ago, faces, bases, banners, and shields, in that order. If you're going to paint something with detail, pick those things and that will distract the viewer from the parts of the model that are maybe not as cool. Well, there you have it. That is my mistake. I don't think I thinned my fluorescent paints with the right kind of medium. I should have used water or something else. Maybe just kept experimenting until I got it right. But giving up on using the fluorescent paints right away, I felt like made the project go faster, but at the same time wasn't what, in this case, what I was trying to achieve. When uh, we take this miniature and put it up next to all of Micah's other miniatures and he turns on a black light, his army glows, except for my dude in the back, which is just dark. It's hilarious and sad. The point of fluorescent paints is that they fluoresce in specific kinds of light. I learned a lot here. Do you feel like you have a sense of style with your painting? If you do, please tell me about it. I want to know. How, how do I get style? How, how do I become stylish? That's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>